What up, guys, and welcome back to Herbs Class, man, for five more minutes in math. I feel like it's been forever since I seen you last, man. Well, so welcome back, man. Let's get to it. Hopefully, you're just leaving this greatest common factor video. And if not, it might be important for you to watch before you watch this one. This one is about taking them GCFs and factoring them out, son. Yeah. So we're going to be taking polynomial expressions, and we're going to be taking them expressions and factoring the GCFs out and rewriting an equivalent expression. Uh-huh. Let me show you a simple example to go ahead and get us started. Okay, looks simple enough, but let's get to it, man. There's a couple of steps to consider when factoring GCFs out. Let's talk step number one. Okay, step one. Step one is to find the GCF and write it in front of some open and empty parentheses. Now, in the last video, we talked all about GCFs, and the GCF between these two terms is... Three, exactly right. So I took that three and I wrote it right here in front of some open empty parentheses. Now leave enough room in the parentheses to fit your old expression because the next step goes like this. That's going to divide every term in my original expression by that GCF. Just like this. Okay, and then I'm just going to write my result right here in parentheses, kind of like this. Yes, exactly right. Now if we take a closer look at what we started with and what we ended with, doesn't this look familiar? Yes! Those are those equivalent expressions we were talking about before. Yeah! So these two things mean exactly the same thing, and I can go back and forth between the two. It's also a good way to check your work. Yeah! If I distribute this, would I get this back? Uh-huh! Let's do a better one. Ooh, okay, this is more like it. Now we're getting somewhere, okay. First step has a change, find the GCF. Now we got three terms, we're finding the GCF for all three. I got coefficients and variables. Okay, so you might have found the GCF to be three X squared. I can divide all of those numbers by three. The lowest exponent of my common variable is two. But one more rule we forgot to talk about. If your leading coefficient is negative, so is your GCF. Yeah, exactly right. Okay, second step. Yeah, I'm going to divide everything in that polynomial by that GCF. Put the results right here. Yes, exactly right. So of course, you know, that means we have equivalent expressions, of course. If I did this multiplication, I would get that back. Go ahead and check your work. One more, let's kick it all the way up. Ooh, okay, we got a couple of different letters now. You think that changes the steps? Uh-uh, step number one. Uh, good, we found the GCF. We wrote it in front of some open parentheses. Exactly right. Step two. Ooh, okay, so when the first term, 10 divided by 5 is 2. X to the third divided by X is X squared. The Y squares cancel out. But what happens here? Notice how the top of my fraction and the bottom of my fraction are exactly the same. Uh-huh. One, exactly right. Please don't leave that blank and think it's zero. When the top of your fraction matches the bottom, that's a one. Uh-huh. Don't forget what this is called. Equivalent, of course it's equivalent. And check this out. When I multiply this 5xy squared times that negative one, when I get that, of course, man, I hope this helps. Don't think it's the end, though. We got a whole lot more factoring to go. But you can take a break for now. For now. I'll see you next time. Thanks for coming by, guys.